Hey, how's it going, duty solfers? So all the parts are in, and as promised, today, how to put the valve cover gaskets, all the camshaft seals in the front and in the rear of both cylinders, plus both camshaft chain tensioner gaskets, and the camshaft caps or plugs that go in the rear of each cylinder, and this 2000 Audi A6 with a 2.7 liter bi-turbo engine. But the procedures in this video will be very similar for the 2.8 liter naturally aspirated engine as well. All right, first things first, we'll remove these engine covers. These are held in by plastic screws. And we got two on each side. So we'll need to remove this Y pipe. So we'll start by loosening these clamps at each end. Next, we'll need to remove this air intake box with this tube. So remove all the connectors that go to the different sensors here. And also your MAF sensor connector and push them out of the way. Next, we'll disconnect this plastic tube that goes into our uh, Y pipe, be very careful with these because these get old and brittle and they're very easy to break. All right, next in order to remove this Y pipe, we have three 10 millimeter bolts that we're going to remove. We should be able to twist these and remove it. All right, next we're gonna remove our coolant reservoir. So we'll disconnect these hoses. All right, there we go. And there are three Phillips head screws. And at last there's a coolant level sensor connector underneath. And here it comes. Next we're gonna remove our engine covers or actually rather our uh, cylinder head covers. So first we'll remove our oil cap and then we'll undo these two plastic screws again that are holding these in and take these off. Same thing on this side. All right, next we need to get these out of the way. So we're actually gonna loosen these clamps for these, push these up here, hold them up there. Then there's one 10 millimeter bolt that I can see right now that looks to be holding these in. So here's this one, we'll set it up top. Oh, this looks to be in a housing that you can just pull them out of. All right, not going by the manual as you can tell. All righty, same thing on this side. Yank this out. Now before we go any further, I think you guys can tell by now that the quality of this video is not my usual quality of a video that you see on this channel and that's simply because I don't have the time right now to spend shooting this video bolt by bolt and then editing it. That simply takes days to be honest and I don't have the time, that kind of time to spend right now. So we're just gonna simply rush through this today. And not to mention there's very little monetary return and these types of videos. But uh, anyway, I'm still gonna do them. All right, next we'll remove our coils and each coil looks to be held in by two 10 millimeter bolts. In order to remove these from their connectors, we just push up on this metal uh, clamp and then remove it. So after doing the same thing on the passenger side, we come over and we're gonna remove our valve cover. This is held in by, I think four nuts up top, two in the middle and then three on the bottom. And again, these are 10 millimeter. The ones on the bottom are gonna be somewhat tricky to get, but with the right extensions, you should have no problem. There's another uh, PCV hose up here that we need to remove. Hopefully without breaking it. Work with me here. Yes. Oh yeah, we need to remove this uh, coolant line as well. There we go. All right, so here's a close look at our driver's side valve cover gasket. It's actually in really good shape. This is a fairly recent job, but I'm pretty sure they only replaced the gasket and it looks like they use gray RTB silicone. But more importantly, they did not replace these uh, chain tensioning gaskets. And that's what's leaking on this car and that's why we are here. So we're gonna remove this. They did use RTB in the right places. It's just not the right RTB. Unless it's some type of a factory RTB, but I doubt it. Alrighty, so same thing on this side. First, we'll remove this uh, coolant hose. No, 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 no. Did you guys see that? Drop the socket right in here. Let this be a lesson to you kids. An ounce of prevention. I don't know the rest of that saying, but you know, you wanna cover up that pipe. All right, now on this side, in order to get to one of these nuts for a valve cover, we need to remove this uh, bracket, which is held in, again, by another 10 millimeter bolt. This guy right here. And then all the nuts. And another PCV hose up here. 
which promises to cooperate with us. Yeah. And here comes this side. And more or less the same thing on this side. So we'll remove our valve cover. And as you can see on the passenger side, the camshaft chain tensioner is on the rear. Whereas the camshaft sensor is on the front, but it's the reverse on the driver's side. All right, so we'll start off by doing the driver's side. So here's a look at our camshaft sensor that's in the back. It's got two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it in. So we're gonna remove those next. All right, so here's one. There's number two. Now I remember, we gotta remove this, uh, this coolant hose completely. Long needle nose pliers to the rescue. There we go. And here's the camshaft position sensor, and I'm just gonna set this aside for now, like this. Next, it's time for another special tool. This goes in like this, next to the camshaft chain tensioner, it screws in there. And this end will put pressure on the tensioning mechanism right here. It will press it down, that way, as you go to, as we go to remove these camshafts, uh, this is, this is, there's, this is not under pressure. Yep, installs pretty easy. And this is the same for the 2.8 liters as well. Oh, and as always, if you see any tools or products used in this video that pique your interest, I'll put links to them down below in the description box. So don't be afraid to click on them and check them out yourself. And we're gonna use a five millimeter hex bit socket to run this down. Now this is gonna bottom out after about a half an inch to a three quarters of an inch. So make sure you stop once it bottoms out, just don't keep on uh, trying to twist this. All right, next we'll remove the connector for our chain tensioner. Get all the wiring out of the way and we're going to start on doing these bolts for our camshaft caps working from the outside end. So we go here first, then we come out to this end, we work our way to the middle. Now that's the safest way to go whenever you moving, removing stuff that it might be under tension. But luckily on this driver's side, none of these cam lobes are pressing down on our uh, lifters. Therefore, there's no spring pressure from our valves against these camshafts. But still, it's good practice to work from the outside going towards the center. And all those bolts holding those camshaft caps in, use a T30 torque socket. And what you want to do is to loosen these by hand first, and then you can use an impact gun to remove them. Now, before you remove these camshaft caps, make sure you have a place that's clean and ready, and you put these in order. This cap at the end might need some gentle persuading, but it'll come loose. Now, if you misplace them and forget where everything goes, it's fairly easy to figure out where they go. The ones for the intake side are different than the ones for the exhaust side. Plus they're all kind of numbered and you can figure out where they go. All right, now we're gonna remove the camshafts and the camshaft chain tensioner, uh, all of that as one piece and get it out of the cylinder head. But before you do that, it's a good idea to clean these up with some uh, brake clean and then mark them so that just in case they move when you remove them, you can put them back exactly in the right spot. Also, if you're wondering, there are timing marks on these camshafts, I think. It's these notches right here. And then the way you would set these up, if you were doing this from zero and you had no marks from before, you would count the links on these uh, chains. I think it's 15 or 16, I don't remember exactly, but that's how you would do it. But this way, if you mark these, this is a lot easier. Now there's one more cap we need to remove. And this should go according to plan, yep. All right, so here's a close look at our cylinder head without our camshafts. Here's a look at our camshaft chain tensioner gasket. This goes on there like this. There's our half moon seal. This is a rubber seal and usually there's some RTV at the end of it where it's uneven, but there isn't any on this one. However, there's some RTV up top, but there's a bunch of RTV underneath it that we need to clean now. And the camshaft cap I was telling you about goes right here on the exhaust cam at the end of it, goes in like that. And here's a look at our camshaft chain tensioner up close and personal. As you can see, our special tool actually screws in to the tensioner itself and presses down on the hydraulic end to, uh, so it's not pressing up against this chain when we go to remove it. And when you put this down, these things are gonna move. They're not gonna be out of place. because you know, as you can see, if I turn it, the, the marks will line up, but you know, they'll move, so it's a good idea just for a, for a less uh, stressful reinstallation, I guess, to mark these. And here's a look at the front of it. All right, now it's time for the cleanup. Now minus this area where they have the RTV, it doesn't look to be that bad. Um, you know, the rest of this should come off fairly easily. Just make sure you cover your engine so you don't get any of these uh, dried up RTV silicone inside your engine. Yeah, just make sure you get the, all the gunk and push them out and not in towards the engine side. And you will also need to clean underneath this end cap that goes at the back of the side. And also inspect underneath your camshaft chain tensioner itself 
And if our TV was used, you will need to clean that off as well. All right, so we're all done with cleaning this side. Now it's time to put things back together. But we're also out of daylight as well, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. And this video will be the removal of your camshaft and your camshaft chain tensioner. And I think you guys have figured out that this is pretty much the same for the passenger side. And then the next video will be putting it all back together and hopefully we can do the timing belts and all of those at the same time as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, do me a huge favor and also check out my other related videos of which I put links to on this side of the screen. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.